Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Welcome to this Rest and Worship Sabbath and also, and that's for Shula Ministries Overcomers Anonymous and also the Sabbath chat for the Pursuit of Christ. So this week basically um, on the Pursuit of Christ we've been basically talking about you know, who will go to heaven with God, who will receive eternal life. On Rest and Worship Sabbath, I talk about what resonated with me. So today I went to the celebration of the June 10th celebration. Um, this is the first one after which um, our president has basically signed, I guess, the bill or whatever that it becomes a national holiday. So, uh, so stay with me on that so I can discuss that because there were some things that really resonated with me that I think that when I went there and on my way out, I went there one way and I came out a different person. It was almost like church, but outside church. Okay. Rodney Square Church. So, okay. For those of you who do not know, my name is Shula Rollins and I am the founder of Shula Ministries Entertainment and Associates Inc. And on this YouTube, we are Overcomers Anonymous. In a Sabbath chat, will we support anybody willing, um, I mean, in the pursuit of Christ, will we support anybody desiring to overcome anything? And we do it with Jesus Christ and what he's accomplished with, to, for us through the cross. So therefore, our deliverance, our sanctification, our holiness, our forgiveness, our grace, and our mercy is sure for Jesus Christ. The things that we thought possible, impossible, becomes possible. So, okay. In the way of the Sabbath, um, the Bible says in Exodus the 20th chapter, verses 8 to 11, that we should remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy, six days shall I labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy stranger, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger, that's when I get, I messed that up a little bit. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, meaning he set it aside for holy purposes. He did that for one day, and that was the seventh day, which we know to be Saturday. So, okay. So, if you haven't already become a part of our YouTube family, please do so by hitting this, this, the word subscribe and just follow it all the way till you see the word all, hit all, and you're in. Every time I do a new upload, you're receiving a notification. Give me some thumbs up. Make a comment. Suggest a title that you will want me to research and present. Scroll all the way under the title. You can get, you can make a comment or leave some information that you want. On the right side of the title is an arrow. Hit it. You get that's my contact information in there. Some more things about um, the topic for today um, and during the week. It's in there about the fundraisers as well. So okay, so. Um, so, all right, so when I goes to the June 10th today, 10th, June 10th, I'm having a hard time saying that. Oh, I was expecting one thing, but it turned out to be something different than what I had expected. So, um, but what came to my mind about this was that lately I've been receiving, and I'm going to say hate mail. Um, not in a way of like directing it, like right at me, but directing it at me and, and my belief in Jesus. And so basically it's about, it was about like, Jesus never prayed a certain way. Um, and to that, I say, Jesus died when we were sinners. It doesn't matter how we pray, as long as we pray. Okay. The Bible says that. You know, when we come to him, he would no wise cast us out. And also at a time of ignorance, when we don't know any better, God is so loving and caring. He winks. In other words, he acts like he don't even see that part. And he gets right to what's important. The important thing is that we pray. The other thing that they talk about is that, um, you know, basically that God didn't have no son out of his body. Now, that's true. However, the Bible talks about um, Jesus because of his obedience that makes him God's son. 
In the spiritual realm, if you're not obedient, then you are a bastard, illegitimate child. In the spiritual realm. See, these things are spiritually um, deserved, so you're not going to always see it in the natural. Okay? So, in that way, it's because of his obedience. You know, the chastisement, the Lord talks about chastisement. If you don't get chastised, it's because you're a bastard. You're not his real son. But when you're chastised, see, Jesus was chastised for our peace. So therefore, he passed with flying colors. He is the son of God. Okay? So, all right. So when I go down to the Juneteenth, I'm expecting it to be an all-Christian function. It turns out, and I understand it, they has something there for everybody of all walks of life, as they should have. It was a community affair. It was not a church affair. It was not. It was certainly godly, because without God, the things that have been accomplished could have never been accomplished. But okay. So while I was there, I was a little disappointed because I'm saying, it's the Sabbath. And I don't want to deal with the worldly music and being in an atmosphere where people are buying and selling and stuff. Because on the Sabbath, we get a break from all of that. You know, we get to be in the quietness and, and an arrest. But while I was there, I see different kinds of people. And I'm going to categorize the people as this. I saw some people that were probably non-believers. And then maybe some of the other ones was like, they were not like known believers. In other words, they believe quietly in the confounds of their own personal life and in their home, but they don't go to church. Okay. Um, and then there was probably some people that were straddling the fence. They didn't know which way to go. Should I go with God? Should I go with this one? You know, kind of straddle the fence. And then there were believers. Okay. I was there. Not perfect, but I was there. And I'm sure there was other ones there too. So, you know, I met these night group of nice people. I ended up staying, sitting with them. And I came there to see Take Six. Okay. So, Take Six, they came on and they sang the 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 um the, the, natu the national black anthem. They, they sang that. So, okay, good. They get this out of the way. This is why I'm here. I can just get home back into my quiet life. But then, you know, I noticed that there was a reason why I couldn't really get anybody to go with me because had I gotten somebody, other people to go with me, I would have been in a different frame of mind. So when I saw the people, I saw their needs. Okay. And I'm saying, I'm glad that Jesus, that Jesus shows us, showed us so much love and he continues to do that. It was a humbling experience because I would never be able to talk about the people who were there. Because as I looked at each person, you know, there's a part in the Bible that says that the ungodly would not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And then it talks about all these different kinds of ungodliness. And then that underneath of that, it says, you were once one of them. So everybody that I see, and for whatever category that I placed them in, they all represented me. Wasn't that humbling? You know, and so when I saw the love of God, how he loved me through th each and every um, portion of my life as I was in those predicaments to bring me to there, my heart went out in compassion. You know, like my Lord, it's like, Jesus stands in heaven as our, our priest. And he's not blaming us. He's not accusing us before God. He's reminded God of his great sacrifice and his blood that he shed for us. Okay. So how can I be anything different? So when I think about the three ways that God tells us to love, to love others as we love ourselves, love others as we want to be loved. I'm saying, so what do I do here? And the thing that was fitting for me was to love as God has loved me. So I had to pray, you know, because that's something that Jesus would have did. And then the compassion, I had to pray and hope for the best because that's what Jesus did for me. Okay. And then the sacrifice that Jesus did. Okay. What did I have to sacrifice? Gossip, laughter, laughing at them, poking fun, criticizing 
and shaming. And if I go on, it could be a whole lot more. Okay? So, we have to be reminded that God is love and that we represent God in the world. Okay? Um, and be sure that um, we're not we're not criticizing, but that we're showing true love. And as a matter of fact, those of us that God has done the most most for, we have the greatest responsibility to bear the infirmities of the weak. So I thank God that I had this experience and these things resonated with me. So whatever position that you find yourself, see hope in Jesus Christ. Okay, this is all I have for you. Now let's see him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. I love you. See you next YouTube. And remember, there's a war going on for your soul. Jesus is the only name given among men whereby we can be saved. Choosing before it's too late.